Okay. Um, I still don't get it. Two step equations. Now, two step equations are very similar to the one step equations, but now we have two operations. So, you know, I'm just going to go through a, a, a very basic problem. Let's just say, hey, I have um, 5x, and we'll, I'll do something similar here 5x plus um, 6 equals 21. Okay? So, a very basic, easy problem, but I'll show you some variations that I'm sure you're probably watching this video because you get stuck on. So, remember, um, when using two-step equations, they're just like one-step equations. If you had trouble with one step, go back and you know watch the video on um, I still don't get at one-step equations. But hopefully at this point you understand inverse operations. The tricky thing with two-step is we need to see which in which operation do we do first. All right, and that's when it comes to that invert or the reverse order of operations. And I don't have an acronym I can spit out for you to memorize this. Just remember that. Here, remember, we need to isolate this variable. I need to get this variable by itself. Because once it's by itself, I can find the value of it. So you can see there's two operations that are happening. I'm multiplying by 5, and I'm adding 6. So I need, just like one-step equations, we undid the operation. First two-step, we're going to do the exact same thing. We need to undo it. But here, which operation do you um, do first? And it really does make a difference which one you do, which one you undo first. So, um, if you look at this, what we're going to have to do is remember the order of operations. Say, you know, do always what's inside the parentheses, and this is for simplifying your order of operations. Do what's inside your parentheses first, then exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Well, when you're solving. We're going to do the reverse order of operations. So now we're going to start from the bottom and say, all right, I need to, I'm going to look for addition and subtraction first. And those are the inverse operations we're going to do first. So instead of, since my variable is being added by six, I need to make sure I subtract by six first. So I'm going to subtract a six on both sides of the equal sign. Now, I'll, I'll go through some steps here in a second. So therefore, when I subtract, remember positive six, negative six gives me a zero. So now I'm left with five x equals 15. So you can see by subtracting, now what I did is I brought a two-step equation into a one-step equation, where now I only have one operation I need to undo. And the operation I need to undo is multiplying by 5. So I need to divide by 5, which x equals uh, 3. Then you can plug it back in and see if it works. Um, 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 6 is 21. And since they're equivalent, we know that the solution of that, or the, the the solution is true. The value of x when at three makes this equation true. Now let's go through um, a couple mis um, misunderstandings that students go through. One thing that I see a lot is students doing this. They want to subtract that six first. Okay. Now remember, we know that the solution is x equals three, right? So we're good with that. Um, so a lot of students want to subtract not just a negative 6 on both sides, but at twice, they want to subtract negative 6 from everything, right? Well, <laughs> if you do that, right, remember, you got to keep equivalent equations. 5x minus 6, it's right, 5x plus 6, you didn't, comp you didn't, you cannot combine them. They're not like terms, right? This has a variable multiple. This does not have a variable with it, so they're not like terms. So right here, you couldn't combine these two. But then a lot of students want to say 5x minus 6, they can combine them. It can't happen. You can't, 5x minus 6 is not negative x, it's not 1x or anything. You can't combine them. And this is why this becomes false. Um, if let's say you do, okay, well then it's 5x minus 6, that goes to 0 equals 15. Well then do the inverse operations by adding 6 and dividing by 5, you don't get the answer of 3, which was our correct solution. So just remember that. You know, make sure that when you're doing this, um, always undo addition and subtraction first. A lot of students might do multiplication first. They say, oh, well, or I'm sorry, I'm divided by 5, so why don't I, uh, since I'm multiplying by 5, let's divide by 5. And they'll do something like that. Well, then, okay, so they have x plus 6 equals, this doesn't even go evenly, and then subtract by 6, well, that's just looking sloppy, right? It's going to be a pretty uh, interesting number we're going to get. Well, even if you wanted to do that, you need to make sure um, you'd have to divide everything by 5. 
Okay, so whenever, if you are going to multiply or divide everything by a number, which is something possible, you have to make sure you multiply and divide everything um, by 5. And that's just to keep everything um, equivalent. So let's go, um, let's kind of take another step here. Uh, let's take a look at this and let's see um, our equivalent equations. Let's see why that worked. So I had um, 5x plus 6 equals 21. All right, now watch. We know the value is 3, right? When I put in a 3 in here, we know we get 21. Well, when I complete my first step, okay, I get 5x equals uh, 15. Notice that the value of 3 still works for this equation, right? So these are what we call equivalent equations. That's why, that's why we use um, our addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality, and so forth, is because they produce equivalent equations. And when I divide by 5 on both sides, again, I get another equivalent equation. But this one gives me actually the value of x. So I'm taking this video pretty long, but I want to go through a couple other things before I go through this. This one was pretty easy to say, hey, it's being added by 6 and being multiplied by 5. That's not where students really get mixed up. Students mostly get mixed up on problems like this. Um, plus, all right, let's do this. Minus 4 equals 11. Or they get mixed up by uh, negative, they get mixed up by negative 3 minus um, y equals 7, OK? And here's where students get mixed up. They know, oh, I'm, being sub I'm subtracting a 4, right? So you need to add a 4 on both sides. But then they say, oh, well, negative x equals 15. And either they stop or they forget that. What is that negative x? What operation is happening? Remember, negative x is the same thing as negative 1 times x equals 15. So the next operation is being multiplied by negative 1. To undo that would be division. So therefore, this answer would be x equals negative 15. Over here, they see, they're like, well, what's happening, right? How do I know if it's subtracting, multiply, or what? Well, remember, subtraction can be rewritten as an addition problem. So don't try to do the commutative property with subtraction. You have to change it to an addition problem. So I can write this as negative 3 plus a negative y equals 7. Now I've had written as an addition problem. I can rewrite this so it looks negative y plus a negative 3 equals 7. Well, remember, plus a negative 3 is really a subtraction problem. So you could say negative y minus 3 equals 7. So by doing all this manipulating, you can now see that, OK, I'm subtracting a 3 from my variable. right? It might not be apparent. It might be apparent because you can see this negative sign. You say, oh, there's a negative sign in front of that 3. And that's what you've got to look at. You can't look at what is the sign in front of your variable. You have to look at what is the sign in front of the 3. Because if I were to put a plus sign, the biggest mistake students would get is they'd see that plus sign and they'd say, oh, you have to subtract 3. Because they see the plus sign in front of the y. Don't worry about the sign in front of the y. Because that's what's going on, right? You need to look at the sign in front of your number. That's going to tell you if you're adding or subtracting. So here, just by knowing that's a negative 3, I can prove it and know that I'm subtracting. So just to solve this so you know the answer, why am I adding 10? So I get negative y equals 10, divide by negative 1, y equals uh, negative 10. So there you go. There's a long overview. I'm sorry, but hopefully that helps you understand how to solve two-step equations.